Okay. A candid review number, I don't know. Okay, I just watched the American Society of Magical Negroes, and it was bad. It, it, I don't know. It was bad. It, it wasn't badly written in the sense that, like, you can sit through it. It's not, like, going to kill you. It's not going to make you want to bash your head against the wall. Unless it's it's going to be more about the messaging, not, like, the writing. But otherwise, it's not, it's not too bad. Although, the, the audience reviews are hilarious. Like, on Metacritic, it, it got a 0 0.6, which is... I don't even know that's possible. Um... But I don't know. This is always going to be... I still think this is always weird for me to talk about, like... Who has it bad, yada yada. Because I'm mixed, I'm black and white, so I don't really, like... I have, like, a tribal urge to, to care about most of this. I kind of just become, like, misanthropic when it... When it comes to race discussions, because it just doesn't really help me in any way. Um, but... I think this movie, like most movies about this, are, it's very tribal. It focuses on material ontology, I guess if I had to like make up a phrase, rather than like the metaphysical. Like all movies like this, like if you look at your ontology, my ontology, are being as people. Like for me, I'll always be black, I'll always be white, I'll always be male, I'll always be human. Or a couple of other things I'll always be, but that's like that's the case. Those those things are always going to be the case. Now, black is a particular, white is a particular, but people consider them as categories, and that's where racism steps in. And blah blah blah, where I can say the category of black is now uh, there. There are these intrinsic qualities in the category of black. There are these intrinsic qualities in the category of white. And now these things that are already different, because if I'm white and you're, you're black, or you're black and I'm white, and we can never be the same in that way. Now, if that's a category we're part of, which it is in a sense, but I mean in, in a broader sense, that it's, it's, a, it's a category. Um, and suddenly there may be conflicting things under that purview, which then separate us even further, and they would be immutable as well. Which you're like, oh, okay, now me and you are stuck uh, completely different from one another and there's nothing we can do about it because it's, it's part of us, like forever. I don't know. Uh, but the movie wasn't great. Th that's kind of what it tries to tackle, but it's not like good at that. I don't know. Uh, I don't really know how to describe it. Uh, so people don't get on me about, like, media literacy or whatever the fuck. Uh, like, I get that the movie is about, especially after the ending monologue, that, you know, black people feel a, a certain amount of uncomfortableness as the minority in the U.S. It, as one of the minorities in the U.S., I should say. Wherein, you know, and this isn't, like, completely unfounded, but they feel that they're they're judged as a collective, as, you know, violent, dangerous, uncomfortable to be around in the sense that, like, like there, there, there are certain ways you have to act, like, when in the, in the magical society, their, their goal is to be, uh, authentically black while inoffensive to whites, like, their, 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 jo their goal is to placate white people, essentially, which is weird and also kind of racist, but, yeah, whatever. But their, their job is to placate uh, white people and make them feel better. So that way, they don't see black people as threats, and now black people don't die as often as if white people are the only ones that kill black people. I don't know. But that's that's a thing. But that, that's what the movie's about, and the movie's essentially saying, why do they have to act this way? Why do black people feel the need to change and be authentically black while being palatable to white people? Sort of in a like uh, like 1950s, you know, the milkman comes over at, in the TV show. He's some black guy. It's like, hey Sam. Well, hello Jameson. How are you doing today? And like you know, like, like that that <laughs> that kind of fucking shit. That's what they're talking about. Uh, I don't know. Just like fitting that role, or like uh, the dude in Casablanca, or whatever. I guess I don't know. 
but I guess that's what they're talking about. Just sort of like assimilation into behaving like white people, whatever the fuck that means. As if it's like a complete monolith. It, it, it doesn't matter. It, it, which they try to go away from the monolith thing because they talk about individuality and them not being viewed as individuals. Whatever, it doesn't matter. And there's a subplot where, you know, women are supposedly forced into a subservient role uh, just because of, like, what's expected of them. I don't really get it. Like, like a, not really subservient, but, like, support role that they don't need to be in. I don't know. Just silly shit. And they kind of, like, make a dig at the end, but that's a whole other thing. But your main characters are Aaron, which is played by Justice Smith, Jason, white guy, Lizzie, love interest, Mick, which he's not really the biggest character, but I'll mention him probably. And then Roger. So these are other people. Uh, I think Nicole Byer from that weird cake show, that's all I remember her from, uh, is also in this, but that's about it. Um, so yeah, so Aaron is some mixed kid that went to RISD and does sculptures with yarn, and he's not very, you know, popular. He's at some art uh, gallery trying to sell stuff, like sell a piece of his, nobody wants to buy it, and he's gonna lose his solo expo or something, whatever, later on, if he, if he doesn't sell one thing. So he goes to the last art buyer, uh, that, that's, you know, interested in purchasing something that night. And he doesn't stand up for himself, and he instead, the guy thinks he's a waiter, so he just goes for it. He says, okay, and he brings that guy's drink over to the bar where Roger is working. Uh, and Roger's like, oh my god, this Negro, he's good at this. So, Justice Smith, Aaron doesn't, you know, sell any of his art, throws his yarn in the trash can, walks away. Roger shows up, he's like, hey, you might be an exceptional one in a million Negro. So he, he takes him and he's like, you're like a prodigy. He's like, what are you talking about? And he grabs his shoulder and he teleports him to a barber shop for some god. I, <laughs> it's kind of funny, but they go to a barber shop <clears throat> and uh, there's a, there's like a hidden door, kind of like a speakeasy. And they, they hop in there and uh, he's now in like black Hogwarts, but not really. And they go into this room where there's a training going on, teaching people how to be magical Negroes, essentially. And then you get into the plot of the movie where, you know, he he's like the perfect candidate because he's hypersensitive to how white people feel, how to make them feel better, and it's just like, it's it's bad, it babies people, it's just, it's like, I don't, I don't know. Like, there are decent points in every film, just as there are decent points in most, like, you know, things in politics, but it all gets drowned out by, like, nonsense. I'd say the things I hate are just, uh, oh, whatever, whatever. But, so, he, he gets accepted in the Society of Magical Negroes, he goes to work at this, uh, social media company, his client is this guy, uh, Jason, who who wants to, uh, has aspirations to become like the CEO of the company, Mick, and so, you know, he has to help him with that so that way he doesn't boil over and I guess become a danger to black people by being an angry white person. I, I guess. I don't really know. Um, so while he's there, and earlier, earlier, sorry, he meets this girl Lizzie getting coffee, he has to, you know, run away from her, uh, due to getting his assignment, which was Jason. But then, Lizzie also shows up. <sighs> and, uh, excuse me. And she's working at the same place. Lizzie's working for the, uh, for the same tech company, so it works out. They get to hang out. Jason gets feelings for Lizzie. Uh, Aaron, whose job is to play KY people, is now not allowed to date Lizzie. And, uh so on and so forth. Uh, and then it culminates at the end where Aaron figures out that he deserves to want things for himself, whether or not it makes people, especially white people, feel uncomfortable, and he gets to be his own person, and blah, blah, blah. 
and it shouldn't have to be a discussion about race, which they kind of get to that a little bit when it's, uh, uh, it shouldn't have to be a, a discussion about race when he, like, feels a certain way about how he's treated because of it. And it, they, they, they were kind of interesting in the beginning, and then it just turned into a speech about, like, how, like, oh, white people bad or whatever. And I was like, okay. And I get it, and I hate talking about stuff like this. Because they're, like, actual, like, racist people that are, like, retarded. I, 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 it's just bad. I don't know. Because you have white nationalists, and then you have black nationalists, which are, like, kind of, like, pan-African, like, weird people. I don't know. And there's all sorts of ways I could get into this, and I won't say too much, but the movie essentially tried to, like, set up, uh, like, a bunch of, uh, false dichotomies, I suppose, I don't know, like, false dilemmas, I should say, where they didn't really say too much of notes other than, okay, black people feel bad within society, it's like, okay, well, where do these, you know, thoughts come from, because, sure, and they, and they, they kind of get around this, at least in their, their story, by saying that these Negroes developed their powers when they were, uh, enslaved on Virginia plantations, uh, so that way, uh, you know, on Monticello or whatever, uh, so that way they could make the experience of being a slave better and more palatable for the slaves themselves so you make the white people feel better and then you know they'll make your lives easier if you if you scratch their back they'll scratch your back because they're the ones in power right that's that's kind of like the you know like kiss the ring bend the knee and then you know they'll treat you slightly better and they'll think you're you know less bad so in, in, there's an element of truth to that at least in the u.s wherein I suppose, you know, the original concept of racism wasn't due to, like, what, you know, whatever, like, oh, I'm, I'm a noticer, pattern recognition, or whatever, because originally it was, like, okay, some Africans that wanted to make some money against the, the, uh, against whatever rulers they had, usually, started selling other people to Europeans, Europeans came and brought them to Europe, and then brought them to America, and then they were just like, you know, inferior is meant to be used as labor, essentially. And in that, like, there, there was no greater cultural context. Now, today it's a bit different, obviously, where, you know, you can look at, like, crime statistics, for example, and it's like, oh, you know, why, what have you done to make white people look at, look at you that way? Like, sure, as an as a, as a individual, nothing, probably. But as a collective, if people are smart, then yeah, obviously they're gonna be like, "Oh, let me cross the street. Let me let me do this. Let me get away from you. You're you're not supposed to be here. Like there's something there's something off about you." People do that, and they kind of address that because at least they have Aaron Justice Smith's character say like, "Everybody's racist at the end," and like in the in the final monologue, it could have been okay if he was just like, because the the guy Jason was like. What, like, what you just said happened, because they had a conversation, it's like, what you just said is racist, and I'm not racist, so whatever you said couldn't have happened, and he's like, you, you can't do that just because it makes you feel uncomfortable, he's like, I feel uncomfortable every day, I feel uncomfortable all the time, because of who I am and what I'm perceived as on, like, a material level, but who I am as a person never comes into play with that, and you can never look at me as just me, as just Aaron, Instead of you look at me as, like, all black people, so that way you don't have to worry about feeling uncomfortable because you see yourself as, like, all white people. But then he starts talking about all white people, and it's like, you can draw the distinction or you can't, but you can't really do both. Because if you try to make the overarching point where it's, like, a more nuanced issue, you can't then make it, like, a, oh, like, like white people don't understand what it's like to be, to be the black man. And, you know, like, who, who, who was, like, it was, like, fucking Mike Tyson or whatever. He's like, you're the, to Eminem, you're the only white guy that understands what it's like to be a nigger. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Makes no goddamn sense. Like, there are plenty of poor white people, dude. Like, I grew, I grew up in the South, bro. You, you see a shit ton of redneck white dudes. They are not living well sometimes, bro. Great people. Absolutely great people. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, like, I, I don't know. And then the Lizzie girl 
you know, he can't be with her, and they, they kind of just throw in some stuff, like, she has a bad day, she's talking to, uh, to Aaron about it, uh, because Jason gets to pitch the, the logo, uh, that she made, because, I guess, because he's a white male or whatever, and they had an interesting, semi-interesting conversation about that later on, but it never really went anywhere productive in it, just in the, the the grand scheme of the movie. So who cares? But I'll I'll mention it, I suppose. But uh, where you know she wanted to, she you know she brought up Mick, the CEO, was like a huge like you know capitalist like you know rah rah, and he was pro meritocracy. She's like okay like you know why can't I participate in that? Because she's in like a support role. Like it feels like her only role is support, and it's like okay women feel like the role is support and yada yada. And then at the end, after uh, Aaron, you know, gives up his uh, position as, you know, a magical Negro and convinces most of the other magical Negroes to, like, stop placating white people, uh, he leaves. And, you know, he's like, before that, he had some grand gesture where he teleported her on top of the Empire State Building because of some conversation they had earlier. And he told her he liked her and so on, whatever. And she said... uh, you know, they were, he found her after, after everything blew over, and he said, I'm sorry, he explained things to her, she's like, oh, I was actually, actually also part of a, of a, uh, of a magical society, and I was about to quit, and, you know, take you to the top of the Space Needle before you, uh, you know, whatever, and then she actually was, it was called, uh, So Swag, and it's, uh, secret organization of, support of wives and girlfriends which you know that's like a dig at like men as a whole where I guess or maybe just white guys where uh, I'm assuming she was supposed to be like Jason's female you know counterpart uh, but she was tired of it because she liked uh, she liked uh, Aaron I suppose I don't know or maybe she was supposed to be Aaron's girlfriend but either way it's a dig where it's like you know women feel like they have to be supportive and placate men because they can they can compete as well, but uh, you know they, they 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 feel as if they're forced to be in a support role, to their, therefore make a man you know be better, be less violent, be less aggressive, whatever the fuck, be you know be happy, and be less of a danger to women. Like you know, get in line, cook the pie, clean the dishes, whatever the fuck nonsense that people talk about. So that way you can, I I don't know, have a easier life as a woman or whatever I, look at that. I, I don't know it's a silly point but I get what they're trying to say um but yeah I, I don't know I, I just think like movies like this they, they always miss the mark on like it's always about like some weird notion of tribe which unironically leads to way more racially uh I would say like regressive conversations because it's not about like a, a sort of metaphysical the metaphysical aspect to your ontology sort of like okay well like what is a human like you are a human you are a man you are a woman like you are but you are man you know what I mean like what does it mean to be man like what what what, what type of creature are you like well like what what are we all what, what what is that thing that we all share what does that mean and not like, you know, rah, 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 like kumbaya, hands across the globe, but like, they always miss the mark on that where they don't discuss anything deeper than just, I look like this, you look like that. And in fact, let's draw distinctions like, oh, I don't want to have to be forced to like take up space like this or act like a black person. It's like, well, what does acting like a black person mean? Like, like trend wise, what, like crime, drugs, like what? And I get that, like, you know, okay, drugs were pushed into low income neighborhoods, black neighborhoods, whatever. But like at the end of the day, like, these things are not intrinsic to you. Like, what's your culture, bro? What, the music? Like, it's... I feel like there's no real culture in America. Like, people say white people have no culture. And that's sort of true. I don't think black people really have a culture either. Like, a lot of their culture is just, like, well, like, abonics. Like, well, like, what? It's just, like, I, I don't know. And as somebody that's, like, black and white, I just, I don't really, like, find a place to sit other than, like, it's just people screaming, my people did this. And other people screaming, my people did this. And it's like, okay, but what have you done? What do you do? As a, like, as a person. Like, what do you do? Because at the end of the day, every black nationalist is like, rah, rah, Africa. And every white nationalist is like, rah, rah, Europe. And they never actually talk about, like, the greatness of American culture. 
other than like some like random thing about like the family or whatever like family is the only thing that makes up a culture like yeah like you need people to generate a society and generate a people and you generate a culture like but you, you need the population sure whatever and I, I mean people in the colloquial sense but at the end of the day like we've generated nothing real here other than just like obsession with like vanity if I'm honest that's why like the the most like people the people that are the most extreme in their thinking really never go like either way I don't know um but it's like like okay like you can't be black you can't act a certain way but like what like like what Aaron what 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 just uh Justice Smith you want to use ebonics you want to say like nigga bro you want to speak like you're from Baltimore bro like 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 legitimately like what like what what is what is because he's dressed like like some like you know stereotypical like soft black dude bro like at the end of the day, like what, like what, what exactly is like, how, how do you want to be? Like, yes, I agree that there was probably some earlier root to racial tensions in the U.S. that had to do with some like weird preconceived notions. Like if you you go to Africa and you never experience black people, but then you, you go to Africa, you you import a couple essentially, you buy them, and you think they're think of them as your inferiors. Like sure, like slavery was a thing rampant around the entire world. And because this was a like a nation where okay like black people were slaves and they they weren't slaves and there's probably some inequal like inequality some unequal in disparity where I, I guess that's kind of redundant but there was some sort of disparity where okay you stop being a slave you probably don't have many skills where do you, where do you go from here probably work on the same farm maybe you're a woman and you're a house slave and you sew so maybe you like make clothing or whatever. But it's never going to be anything like too useful. You're going to have to figure that out on your own in a country where you were essentially, not essentially, you were a slave until some point in the future where you weren't. And I can sympathize with that. But aside from that, like that's like a afterward, stereotypes and the way people are treated is based on behavior. And like white people have certain things too. Same with any group. And that's the thing. But it just, it, it, it always gets to the point where it's like, it doesn't become about like okay in today's day and age where do these ugly things that we've grown past like what have they morphed into and how do we have a compassion to talk about that but it's like blaming it's like when indian girls get made fun of uh for not liking indian guys and then they they say stupid shit like they blame internalized white supremacy or whatever bullshit because they want to date white men it's like okay just say you find the indian guys ugly it's the funniest shit in the world to me when they, when they just, like, don't do that. I'm not saying that as an insult to Indian guys. It's just, like, when Indian girls do that shit, it's, like, so fucking funny. Same with Asian women. I, I know they're both Asian, but I'm just saying that as, like, a colloquial distinction. But I, I don't know. Uh, overall, it's a movie that you can sit through, I suppose. That's about it. But it's always just going to be, like, another Black Pain film. And then there'll be some people that just don't want to watch it because they feel... Uh, what's it called convicted by it in some way shape or form instead of just wanting to talk about anything remotely productive so there'll be probably like a, a group of you know like a large outcry of white people just being like this is racist this is counter like you know this is also racist and it is it is in, it is in a way but I, I don't know and I feel like this always just muddles like actual black problems and concerns it's like, like, what do you want to be? Like, what does it mean to be authentically black in the culture? I don't even know. Like, what, you like Tyler Creator, bro? Like, what, what does it mean to be authentically black? Because they said, oh, we have to be authentically black and inoffensive to white people. It's like, why can't I just be black the way I want to be black? What does that mean? Like, as a black person, what the fuck does that mean, bro? Like, what, I like the NBA and rap music and, like, like, like whatever, bro. Like, every, everything that's, like, considered black is, like, social justice, being gay, and, like, pop culture unironically like i can't sit there and watch wilding out because it's like oh this is a minstrel show but like made by black people like unironically i don't even see what the fuck the point of that is i, I don't know but it's like oh i want to be i want to be me in this way i want to be black in this way but it's like, like what, what does that mean now in today's day and age what does it mean to be like authentically black in a way that doesn't placate white people i don't even fucking know it's just, it's just like degenerative at this point, it doesn't it doesn't produce anything. Like I, I I I genuinely don't understand like what the 
the argument is on the other side other than like I just want to be able to do whatever I want and act however I want like yeah who doesn't bro we were all children at some point I don't know I don't know you're gonna have a, a group of white people being like this is racist blah 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 and then instead of being like this is wrong and we should talk about it they're gonna be like but if the shoe was on the other foot and then they would be like why can't I also be racist like how about nobody's racist how about that I don't know the movie is bad. Missed the mark on everything it was trying to talk about, as usual, most of these movies do. Always way too tribal, always too stupid. I, I don't know. It's kind of disappointing. It's kind of funny if you just sit there and you turn your brain off. It's kind of funny. You're not going to laugh at like the jokes in the movie, usually, but there are things to laugh at. Like, you know, like I, I, I couldn't help but, like, chuckle. You know, he, he fucking teleports outside the barber shop, and then there's, like, a hidden speakeasy door or whatever. I don't know. And it is going to be, like, black pain tied to politics, because there are genuine black concerns. Like, oh, you know, back in the day of segregation, oh, my grandfather couldn't use a bathroom. My grandfather couldn't use, uh, uh, couldn't drink out of the water fountain at school. Like, okay, that makes sense. Or my grandfather couldn't go to public school. Like, oh, like, you know, like, in the in the city or whatever. Like, you know, where, where all the white people were. Like, he couldn't go to his district of school. Okay, that makes sense. Whatever, like, these are, okay, sure, these are problems. But then, like, it, it always becomes, like, a political movement. Actual black pain is like, oh, okay. Well, you had actual struggles, but now you're gay. And you're trans, and you're a woman. You're feminine now, because black, blackness is tied to fem, uh, femininity. Because all of these people have had struggles or perceived struggles or whatever the fuck. And now suddenly, like, you are them and they are you. Because we just want to, like, group it all together and have one giant big office party for all the birthdays in March. Because because you, you don't actually have issues or anything important. You just need to, like, have an outlet to bitch a little bit. I, I don't know. There's never going to be an actual, like, productive conversation in any movie like this, I feel like. But if you, if you want my thoughts, it's a funny movie. Theaters are usually empty because the shit has terrible reviews for a good reason. Uh, I was there with my brother. You know, we, we sat there. We were the two out of four people in the theater. And that was it. And I'm pretty sure the couple that was like five, ten rows above us was like having sex or something. Uh, <laughs> so like, <laughs> you could, you could kind of just like pop in there, buy some expensive movie snacks or sneak some in. Who cares? And then just watch a movie. Watch a movie, turn your brain off, laugh a little bit. The dialogue's not going to make you want to kill yourself. I, I, I think that's the best I could say about this movie. But otherwise, it's not very good. Uh, but yeah, I guess, I guess that's it. I don't know.